<laughs> is minimalism dead? That's what we're going to be discussing in today's video and some of my personal thoughts on what I actually think about that. The sun is finally out and I'm so happy that I can finally put my shorts and vests on. And yes, obviously we've got a little prop out from the thumbnail, but I want to delve into today some of the things that I've seen sort of circulating around and some of the, even if you can say it, trending videos on minimalism, because I actually think that the minimalist community is actually quite a small community. One second, let me close all my windows because there is a lot of outside noise today. So I actually think that in the great scheme of things, because there are, you know, millions of users on YouTube and even more people in the world, I think that the amount of people that are minimalists in the world is actually very, very small. So based on that premise, we could definitely say that minimalism is dead. But I think what some of the trending videos that say this type of thing are perhaps leaning towards is meaning that it really, really took off around 2017. Sort of, there were all these really trending videos on YouTube. People that had minimalist channels saw absolutely huge views of like hundreds of thousands quite regularly. And that's becoming less and less. And I'd have to say, that I sadly think that TikTok has something to do with it. But that might also be the decline and then the rise again of minimalism. At least that is the hypothesis that I'm putting out there. Because I think around 2017, people were realising perhaps total hypothesis that, you know, we were starting to become just a ridiculous ridiculous consumerist society. I found a statistic the other day, I'll insert it somewhere, that basically said that in the last five years, we'd spent more and bought more and made more waste than in the whole century prior. So it's almost like somewhere some of the some of us with a conscience got, you know, got this idea that, you know, we're consuming too much. We need to actually cut this down, it's ridiculous, and turn to minimalism and then turn to YouTube and the internet to look up, you know, how can I be more minimal? But then, because of a certain 2020 thing that happened globally, people were bored at home. Now, whilst that made, might have made some of us think, do you know what, my home is a mess, I'm going to spend this time sorting it out, tidying up. It did the opposite for some people and made people, you know, around the same time TikTok came out, scroll, 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 doom scroll on TikTok. Everything is actually always selling anything. You know, now there are even adverts on YouTube, adverts on Instagram, adverts on the TV. We even now have to have adverts on all our, if you have TV subscriptions here in the UK, you know, there's options to have it for sort of half price if you allow adverts on like Disney, Netflix, what else is there? Prime. And sometimes there isn't even an option now to have it without adverts because they want us to have the adverts, obviously, because they want to sell us stuff. You know, we're all just, we're all just um, money making numbers to the to the big executives. So So if there is no way, so if there is no way of escaping, you know, all these adverts, it's like people thought, what what can we start to do? I've got to learn how to be more minimal. But TikTok seemed to surpass that, to surpass that want in people. And now it's gone on this huge train again of people wanting to consume. But I think there's gonna be a real backlash from that. And I think it's starting to happen. And whereas in the last year, perhaps, 
we've seen a decline in a want for minimalist content, perhaps even a want for minimalism, people having the, you know, loads of different products and things. Like when I go into other people's bathrooms, whilst not judging, I am always shocked at the amount of products that people have at any one time, like more than anyone can possibly use. And it is really like a scarcity mindset that people are scared that if they don't buy that extra bottle of shampoo now, it is going to run out. What will they do if they don't have that, you know, latest argan and pineapple scent? So, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just gone wild. But I think, like with anything to society, when there is an equilibrium, a disequilibrium, things will eventually balance out and we will, you know, come back to the status quo perhaps, or even better, even improve, you know, have that time of change and hopefully things will come out the other side. And what I'm really hoping now is that there is a backlash against all this drive to consume more, especially on platforms like TikTok. And we come out of it the other end with minimalism being more of a thing, that people are more conscious about what they consume, what they buy, that we don't live in this throwaway culture. And that it's great as well if you're trying to be frugal, like I've said I'm going to be in recent weeks. It's great if we're trying to be frugal and we want to be careful with our money, but just because we found something cheap or bought something cheap, I don't think we should necessarily cheat, treat it like it's cheap and just discard it. Obviously there are different circumstances where that might have to be the case, i.e. if you are traveling, but we can still discard things, you know, in a sustainable way. And we can still try to think about what we're actually doing, more particularly when we're at home and there's more capability to not do that. Now let's have a change of the microscope <laughs> and put some more things under the microscope. So I think the specifically mean when they ask the question, is minimalism dead, is the fact that as a content creator and minimalism as a content, you know, has it dead? Is it dead? Has it become cancelled? And I think particularly what they mean about that is that there isn't much room to move or grow in minimalism because there's perhaps because it is an alternative way of life, you know, it's a divergent way of life to normal. There are not going to be many people one, wanting that way of life, so that you're always limited then. And then, obviously, as I'm definitely learning in the recent weeks, the more and more and more and more we declutter, if we are not constantly caught in the consume by declutter cycle, which is what some channels do that are perhaps more home organisation channels than minimalist channels, is they slowly have lots, well, maybe more things creeping back in, and then, so there is always constantly stuff to declutter. Whereas I feel like on perhaps a more normative minimalist journey, even as an extreme minimalist, it's very rare that you can completely declutter without the odd thing creeping back in. But I'd like to think it's more like 10 things out, one thing in, maybe even more, 20 things out, one thing in. Whereas I think what's happening in a lot of home organization videos and maybe even people's general lifestyles is it's 20 things out, 20 things in. Now, don't get me wrong, that is still sort of sticking to the one in, one out rule. And it would definitely still help your room and your home not look, you know, cluttered, but you're still being caught in that consumer cycle. Now, advertisers might still like you if you're doing that, because obviously you're still consuming, but you're just eventually getting rid of that stuff as well. So your home looks maybe lovely and calmish, but you're still, you're still consuming. Whereas I think when people ask the question, is minimalism dead? They mean eventually the content may dry up because once you have decluttered everything and if you don't get caught in that buy cycle of constantly buying things, you may find that there is only sort of one or two things a year that you can possibly declutter. And it's probably when you've worn your vest out or worn your shorts out or something has broken, you know, you're using those things up. And that's a, perhaps a more, definitely more eco-friendly way to consume, showing that we all still have to consume even as minimalists, but it's not to the extreme of, you know, high, high mass consumerism. So, in asking the question, is minimalism dead? 
it is in the sense that eventually it would die a death if you didn't constantly consume and then the trick for us minimalist creators out there when we have eventually decluttered our stuff is finding the next level finding how minimalism becomes about more than just our stuff just how we organize our homes how tidy and you know carefree and stress-free we are as a result of not having the stuff and it becomes about the next phases and I think perhaps some of the Marie Kondo, KonMari stuff made many people think that minimalism is just about the stuff. You know, Marie Kondo has the five phases of the home, but rather than taking them into rooms like other minimalist channels does, she specifies them by categories, you know, clothes, books, paper, I know there are other areas as well. So... I think that's what's led a lot of people to think it's just about the stuff. So when the stuff is gone, minimalism is dead. And in that sense, I can see why people would think that. But if we make it not just about the stuff, then it is actually not dead. You know, minimalism is alive. And I pa pa la la la. And for some of you who regularly watch my channel, you're probably thinking, well, you've been decluttering a lot lately. And I have. And that is because I am on a very specific journey to try and get rid of as much as possible because I do intend to eventually emigrate. I don't really want to put anything in storage. And because we moved into this home about a year ago, which is very small, 32 you know square meters i think i've got that the right way around i always get the feet and the meters mixed up it's very small there's two of us living here and yeah we don't have much stuff for storage at all which has been overwhelming for both my partner and i since we moved in about a year ago which is why we've really gone on a decluttering tangent sooner but i think we will comfortably and intuitively know when we've got to the point of knowing what is definitely the baseline of things we want for this remaining bit of time that we are here. Now, I have got some quite big changes coming up and let's just say it might be in the living room, an area that I thought that I could not declutter anymore, perhaps these, perhaps the rug I'm sitting on, who can say, but if not, I might try those things out to begin with. And there are a few very good reasons for that. I'm not just doing it just for the sake of it. I'll let you all know when that video comes up. You will obviously know by the thumbnail that I intend to declutter something very big. The point that I'm getting at is when I do know that I have got to the end of my decluttering journey, I will obviously be doing videos like one in, one out, showing where a kind of natural evolution has come with my possessions. And I will definitely be talking more about mindfulness. But I think at the beginning, you know, some of us declutter slower than others and we were definitely prompted to all of a sudden speed that journey up when we moved into this home. You know, I've only been making videos on YouTube for slightly over two years, so just over two years. And it's been it's been <laughs> a roller coaster. You know, in the beginning, we decluttered a lot of stuff to move into the house share. We hardly had anything because we didn't need it because we were sharing our possessions. And then you know, sharing the household possessions. And then we moved out of there. We also needed some stuff again. We moved back in here. We ended up getting a few things gifted back to us. And now we've all of a sudden realised, hold on, that amount of stuff in this home is overwhelming and we're going to have to get rid of it eventually anyway. So let's get rid of it. But what I am realising lately is the more and more and more I declutter and everybody's, you know, lapping up that decluttering content because we do like to see that. It's refreshing and calming and invigorating to see other people decluttering and letting go of these items that they've realized don't really matter to them and i find that interesting even as a viewer as well but then it'll be interesting to see what happens at the end of that because you know i've mentioned that we may sublet this home so it may that be that we get to a baseline of things in the home and then i leave it at that and we go away but at some point, if we emigrated permanently, then I would have to come home and take care of this stuff and get rid of it before we went back out to wherever we had moved to. And then 
it'd be interesting to see where we perhaps live in a new place when we eventually settle when we eventually settle down like in a cabin i think we'd always keep it pretty minimal but it'd be interesting to see what direction we went with that and i don't think though and perhaps this is another element of his minimalism dead is once you have lived with a lot less, I think it's hard to ever go back to having more. It becomes unsightly to you. Like I've occasionally gone back to like my first video on YouTube. And when I look at my home tour now of what I thought was really quite minimal, I think, oh, look at all that stuff there. And to me, it doesn't even feel that minimal anymore. And it's amazing to see your own journey and see whether you could ever go back to having more once you've had less. And I don't think to a degree you can. And this experiment that I'm doing at the moment, this bum bag challenge to prepare as well for very, very light travel and seeing what's realistic for these super extreme minimalists with under 20 items. It's interesting to live with only 14 items for 30 days because this is one area where I think obviously I will definitely introduce a little bit more back in but it makes me realise how much of my 80 personal possessions that I own are actually a little bit extra without me even realising, you know, because I've had to have so less now, that feels like a lot more. It's a very, it's a very interesting experiment to do. But I think that moving forward, I will definitely be moving down the line of creating much more mindful content perhaps even going into the realm of helping other people declutter because once I have decluttered everything you know once I'm at Sibu's level I don't know if any of you watched that video that I did like a commentary reaction video video to you know the most extreme Japanese minimalist I'll link that down below for you you know once you get to that level you clearly don't have anything to declutter anymore so then I'm still going to create what I hope is very, very interesting content for you all because I definitely don't want this minimalism to run its course on my channel and for you all to only want to watch decluttering content, which I know is perhaps one of the most watched videos on my channel. And I keep getting asked the question, you know, why do you keep doing all these decluttering videos? It's a little bit too much. But people who do you know, home organisation channels who have more in their home don't get asked the same question. I think it's just a little bit shocking for people because I have got so few items. They think, come on, that's enough now. But that's everybody's own, you know, personal level of what they're comfortable with. Eventually, I will reach my comfortable level. It's just taking a longer time to do that. We're all, you know, gradually decluttering at varying levels. Some people can just do it the first week. Some people take longer. Some people take 10 years. I've taken around two years to get to this point and I just want to make sure that, you know, I then don't give you all something that you don't want, which is obviously everybody says they want some of the mindful content, but then, you know, YouTube says differently. It seems to be the decluttering content, which is much more successful. Obviously, I want to make nice videos, but I also want them to be, you know, perform quite well i want my channel to reach further because i enjoy making videos and as somebody who is artistic i think everybody wants to think that the art or work is being viewed by more of an audience so i think that's a natural reaction to ha you know a natural thought to have so I'm going to make sure that we still get to give you the decluttering content at the end of this personal decluttering journey. I make more and more, you know, mindful minimalist content. And obviously, very soon, perhaps autumn time, I'm definitely thinking there will be a second channel for you all to see more of my life than just the decluttering and the minimalism. Because I have tried to do that here on this channel before but it never seems to work that well with the YouTube algorithm. We are at the mercy of the YouTube algorithm. You know, it's YouTube that is putting minimalism under the microscope and it appearing to only share the decluttering content. And that's one last thing that I would say actually to, to viewers out there watching who find this video is 
please don't judge your content creator just on the videos that you are suggested because you might be only suggested every other video or every fourth video and it's only when you go on their channel perhaps subscribe but even just visiting the the channel that you actually see the list of all the other content they've made for instance i've done ones on maximalism versus minimalism how to stay calm how to live stress-free i do lots of content like that but sometimes it's just not suggested and then it gives you the feeling that all i'm making is the decluttering content when i'm not anyway this is getting quite long now i hope i've answered the question for you is minimalism dead it is dead if we think minimalism is only about decluttering because then it's got you know a life span unless we're constantly buying things but it is not dead if we then learn the next phase of minimalism and that makes us continue to be able to make content if you have all got to the end of this video and you are happy for me that some of you who sent the sun to me in the last video when i said we hadn't been getting much sun here I'm so happy some of you have sent the sun to me, so thank you very much. Thank you for watching, and please comment a sun emoji if you have watched right till the very end. Thank you all for watching. See you in the next one where we will perhaps be discussing what comes next after decluttering, although there are still perhaps some decluttering videos to come. Bye.